Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning and welcome to Encounter. I'm your host today, Joe Selipak, the Executive Director at the Broome County Council of Churches. I was saddened this week to learn of the death of Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell, um, if, if I were to characterize him as anything, was one of the, the, the top country music artists that my grandmother and grandfather used to play when we were going on vacation. And so almost all the time I would listen to Wichita Lineman, Adios, um, uh, Rhinestone Cowboy. There was a whole number of a whole number of songs that Glenn Campbell did that that really, even to this day, kind of touched me because it reminds me of my grandma and grandpa. Um, one of the things that Glenn Campbell was suffering from was dementia, and Alzheimer's. When he was um, uh, just this last year, he he wrote a song called um, "I Won't Remember You," which chronicles his 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 disease, and he was basically apologizing to his daughter that he wouldn't remember her when he, when he leaves. Alzheimer's is a tough disease. It's something that comes on early. There, they call it, there's early, middle, late stages of it. And, um, it's, and it chronicles, you know, goes along with, um, there are 5.1 million people within the United States who today suffer from dementia and Alzheimer's. And, um, uh, the, the, the numbers are growing in accordance with the, the population. So as the population ages, we have more and more of these people. And so one of the things that happens within, within that is it places a lot of burden on caregivers. Now, how, how burdened do caregivers get when they're, especially at home, when they're trying to deal with folks who have, who have dementia? What are some of the struggles that they might have? Um, the struggles that they might have is um, they also have to remember their parents doctor's appointments um, their medication on time um, making sure that they have all their supplies that they need and it it gets very overwhelming after a while and, and making sure that they're safe too would be exactly would be a, a huge part of that as well exactly. right? exactly so, you know, they sometimes lack the structure at home. And so oftentimes, especially with, with folks with dementia, mm -hmm. they, the, the tendency is just to sit in front of a TV and do nothing, right? Correct. And they also have to make sure things in, around the house are like say, hazard things are safe for their parents where like that the parents don't leave the tea kettle running and stuff. That's a major one these days. Now, what would what would um, what would they do if there were, like, your your the program that we're here to talk about is Big Apple Daycare, and mm -hmm. my my guests today are Pam Slavic and Danielle Lap Lapidus Lapidus, who's the uh, they they both work with um, uh, Big Apple Daycare. Um, how, what what does how does your your organization help people who are are caregivers? Um, our organization helped them out where the caregivers, where they go during the day to their jobs and they're worried about their parents being left home alone and they can bring them down to our daycare where they can enjoy their day playing games and stuff like that and socializing and they're not having to worry about where their parents are. And even they can help them if a caregiver just wants a break for a day or two days, or you know, or the whole week, Monday through Friday, um, we'll have that flexibility soon to just give a caregiver whatever amount of rest they need. Hmm. You know, sometimes they just want to go get their hair done. It's important to fill up your own bucket before you can give to your aging or disabled parent. Once you have that energy back it's easier and everything goes smoother for everyone yeah because it, it i could see where it would be very much very, uh, real burden on on some folks because i mean one of the first 
as I've been researching this, one of the one of the first things to go is are some fine motor skills. They they start losing the ability to button their button their their um, um, their shirts or their blouses. They they tie their shoes. A lot of that things that we we take for granted. Folks with dementia and Alzheimer's begin to to have problems with and. Those familiar things even can add to the frust their own frustration, mm -hmm. and they often will take it out on the people that are closest to them, which are the people that are probably doing it for them, right? Correct. So, so, so those folks really need somebody to step in that would be able to help relieve them of some of that pressure, so that they can even get through the, just their own day. It's very stressful. Very stressful. And our adult daycare at Big Apple is for people with onset dementia and right. Alzheimer's. So like you mentioned, them beginning to forget how to dress themselves, how to clean themselves. Um, we can handle the onset stages, but we are a non-medical social daycare. So when they reach a point where they just totally forget these things, then we make sure that they are passed to another medical oriented social daycare that can really give them the help they need. Right, and so you, you help them in that process then. Absolutely. Correct. And you can begin to tell when a person gets to that point where they need to be, enter into, into, into a medical treatment center. Mm -hmm. And you can um, help the families make those choices. Correct, and we would refer, send a referral out to that to the family and what daycare to send them to. Absolutely. So um, what are some of the things, I, I was noticing on your website, some of the things that you do with, with, with some of the, the folks that are there? Um, we play bingo. Um, we have birthday parties. Are, is bingo big? They love bingo it. Bingo is big. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> Um, painting rocks is another big one. We got involved with the uh, Broome County Rocks. So I supplied the members with rocks and they paint them whatever they want to paint on the rocks. And then they get to take them home and distribute them throughout Broome County. And some of those designs were pretty interesting, weren't yes, they? Yes, they are. There was a sneaker, there's ladybugs, there's American flag, there's all positive sayings like stay positive, um, help another, things like that. And it's amazing because it uncovered a hidden talent <laughs> with one of our members. She should be a professional artist. Her rocks were so good. Beautiful. They were beautiful. And what, yeah. did, what did she do? She did an ice cream cone, which looked like so good you could eat it. It was just <laughs> so beautiful. And then she did a couple poster-like rocks. Right. And then she did one for our facility, which was a picture of a member. And she had a big apple on the side of her, and it said Big Apple Social Daycare, and it was beautiful. Did you keep that one? I'm thinking <laughs> about keeping that one. <laughs> it, see, it would seem, or you could put it someplace prominent so that people would know that you exist. I think I but. might display it by the front door so when people come in and inquire about the place, they'll see it. And you can point to it and say, see that? That's one of the yep. things that they do here. One of our inspirational things. Yeah. So it, it seemed that puzzles were big too, right? Yes, puzzle, puzzles are very big. Yeah. Now what, what kind of puzzles do they? There's do? like thousand pieces puzzles, 500 pieces puzzles, 250 puzzles. I mean, there's all kinds of puzzles. And, and they it, spent all day doing them. And it seemed to me that, you know, that actually goes back to some, some of the things that, that people struggle with with dementia is trying to keep focused mm -hmm. and keep, um, you know, and be able to structure their thoughts in a way that makes sense to them. And puzzles are very good for that. Yeah, it helps, helps them struggle, structure things. So is reading. So you, you seem to have a big library too, right? Yes, we do. And, and we're getting all kinds of books. <laughs> And do you take do you take um, do you take donations of books? Yes, we do. Okay, yes. so a, a person could bring you um, some. Are you specifically novels, or are you looking at all different types all of different kinds of books? Yes, and our library is also a lot of the members like to take naps on the couches. <laughs> <laughs> 
which is also good because, I mean, if they're very tired and they don't want to sit at the tables, they're welcome to go in and take a nap. And so what are, um, what are you, you take people that are on Medicaid and Medicare, and so how would, how would people um, access that? Yeah. What, what are your, I, I think the, we have two different types um, of The Medicaid here. and the Medicare, um, they have to enroll into a medical long-term care plan that Medicaid offers, which will pay for the facility and it includes the transportation if they need it. It includes the lunches, the breakfast, um, all the snacks that are provided for them. And um, a nurse comes out to their home and also they get a weekly aide who comes out and also helps them. And the ICE circle and VN? They do have to join one of two of the health plans where long-term managed care plans we're working with and those are ICE circle and VNA. Um, and Medicaid and Medicare um, work with those two plans, whichever one takes them once we fill out the eligibility paperwork. Um, and then the billing is directly through one of those two facilities and the, or those plans. And the managed long-term care to qualify, you, you have to be kind of in between independent living and a nursing home. So if you qualify to live in a nursing home, you're not going to be a member at our daycare, but we take members that maybe in a year or two down the road or six months might need to go into a nursing home because they're transitioning from independent care to a more structured, safe environment. And so how would people get in touch with you if they were, if they were struggling with this with a loved one? How would they... Who, who, how would they get in touch with you? They can get in touch with us. We're also on Facebook. So a lot of the mem family members can look on Facebook for us. And the phone number and email addresses are available on there as well. Or they can walk in. Yes, we love located. giving tours. <laughs> We're located right on Main Street in Binghamton in the Aaron Plaza. And, and so the Aaron Plaza is right near Dunkin' Donuts, too. So if they remember where Dunkin' Donuts is, they, they'll, they'll pretty find much us. find you, right? <laughs> Across the street from Tom's. Absolutely. A block down, down from Tom's. block yeah. down okay. from Tom's. Across the street. I live uh, on the west side, so I know exactly what we're, what we're talking about here. So very cool. So um, as far as, as, far as uh, the, the, your, your facility itself, how many employees and what's the ratio of employees to? I have a total of four employees right now. Um, and I, wanna, I would like to keep five to 10 members per employee because I would prefer that the employee pays more attention to the members and not be overwhelmed and that the members also feel very close to the employee. And cared for too. And I cared for so. correctly. Yeah, because one, one of the problems that you have often is with, with folks with dementia and Alzheimer's is they, they become hard to handle mm -hmm, at certain, certain points because they get angry, they get frustrated. They, they may even, um, I, I've seen folks who were the sweetest, nicest people that to be around and the, the personality shifts. Oh, we and have often. those. <laughs> yeah. Very often. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how important are, are things like um, old movies or things that... Very important. That they would... And, and, and why, why would that be important to them? Um, it makes them look back in their time where they were happy. Mm that they remember the great times that they had when they see those movies. Mm -hmm. It validates their life, mm -hmm. you know? It, they're not forgotten, and it just brings back happy memories, like Pam said, and Correct. that's just so special. We do try to have movies for them as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We have movies once a week. And, and the, it would seem, seem that, too, that they may remember an older movie, whereas they you know, a new movie that just wouldn't speak to them at all. Correct. So they're, they're, 
they're kind of, um, as you were talking, I, you know, I was thinking, you know, that you, they would remember the first date maybe of, that they had with their loved one. Exactly. You know, or something like that. So they go in, you know, and they go into, you know, a, an Audrey Hepburn movie or something like that. Because it's, yes. it's uh, it reminds them of, of that time in their life, right? Or White Christmas. Bing Crosby. Yeah, that's, yes. a great, <laughs> yeah. that's a great that's movie. That's a great yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah, we dust it off every Christmas at my house. But yeah. my wife loves what my wife loves that stuff. So you offer like a structured environment for for people with um, with Alzheimer's and early early onset on Alzheimer's and dementia. Why is that important? It's important because um, people with the Alzheimer's they tend to wander and we have a bell on the door so every time somebody goes in or out the door it rings and it's an automatic thing for us to automatically yes. look at the door <laughs> when it rings right right so it's it's safe for them and the other thing is when they have the onset of dementia and Alzheimer's other senior centers that are more independent, you walk in, you, you do a craft if you want, you do this if you want, you do art lessons if you want. These people tend to just sit at a table and stare. They're, they need the one-on-one -on -one encouragement to participate in activities. And those type of independent center, centers, they get overwhelmed in. And, and quite frankly, those centers don't want that type person there because they don't want someone just sitting there they don't have the staff to take care of them or watch after them like we do and my guests today are pam slavic and danielle lapidus 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 i'm sorry i will get that before the end <laughs> it's okay so uh and, and we're talking about the big apple daycare center that's located on main street in uh binghamton and um, we, we've been talking a little bit about Alzheimer's and, and it, how many people within our, our country are afflicted with it, the different stages of on, Alzheimer's and um, some of the, the, the things that they offer at their daycare that, that kind of correspond to those, to those needs that people with Alzheimer's and their caregivers may have. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that I, I thought was would, would, would be interesting for our, our listeners to hear are maybe some of the stories of people that have been able to be helped. Do you have, do you have any, um, um, any thoughts on that? We have birthday parties, and that's a big help yeah. because there's so many members, and they realize they do have all these friends. When we have their birthday party, they're like, I, I have so many friends already. And it makes them very happy. We just we just celebrated a member's birthday, and three days before his party, he was going around moping that nobody paid attention to him and nobody <laughs> cared for him. And then we surprised him with a cake and everything, and 